Okay, so if 11 grams of aluminum and 29.6 grams of copper to oxide are mixed, what is the theoretical yield in grams of aluminum oxide which could be produced? Okay, so before we try to answer this question, we have to first write out a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. So we have aluminum, I guess is a solid, plus copper 2 oxide. So copper has the oxidation number of 2, so only one oxygen is needed since oxygen also has an oxidation number of minus 2. So it's just going to be CO. Maybe this is in its aqueous form. And a single displacement reaction would occur with these compounds. So basically, now we have copper solid and aluminum is now with the oxygen. So aluminum's uh, oxidation number is 3 plus and oxygen's is 2 minus. So our formula is Al2O3. And now we need to balance this equation. So we have two aluminums on our product side and only one on our reactant. So I'm just going to put a coefficient of 2 in front of that aluminum. And we have three oxygens on our product side. So again, I'm just going to put a 3 in front of copper 2 oxide. And now we have three coppers on our reactant side. So I just need to put a 3 in front of the copper on our product side. So now everything should be balanced. And under each of these compounds, I'm just going to write out everything we know. So we know the mass of aluminum is 11 grams. And we can also write down the molar mass of aluminum, which can just be found on your periodic table. It's 26.98 grams per mole. Okay, so th these are all the uh, variables we know for aluminum. So now let's do the same thing for copper. We know the mass of copper to oxide is 29.6 grams. And we can calculate the molar mass of copper to oxide just again by going on the periodic table, finding the molar masses of both copper and oxygen. And when you add them all up, you should get a total molar mass of 79.55 grams per mole. And in the question, we want to find the theoretical yield in grams of aluminum oxide which could be produced. So under aluminum oxide, I'm just going to put that our mass is unknown. And I can also write out the molar mass of aluminum oxide as well. So 2 times the molar mass of aluminum plus 3 times the molar mass of oxygen gives us 101.96 grams per mole. Okay, so I wrote out everything that was given. Now I can try to start answering the question. So step 1 is to find the number of moles of both of our reactants. So the equation for number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. 
So let's do aluminum first. Its mass was 11 grams, and its molar mass is 26.98 grams per mole. So we get a final number of moles equal to 0 0.408 moles. Now let's find the number of moles of copper to oxide. Its mass is 29.6 grams, and its molar mass is 79.55 grams per mole. So if we divide this out, you end up getting 0 0.372 moles. Okay, so step two is to now find the theoretical Uh, number of moles of aluminum oxide. So to do that, we need to use molar ratios to go from one number of moles to one of our products. So for example, we know that 0 0.408 moles of aluminum is in our mixture. And if this was to react and completely, then we know from our balanced equation that one mole of aluminum oxide is formed for every two moles of aluminum. And that's how you convert from moles of aluminum to aluminum oxide. So it's pretty much dividing its number of moles by 2. So you get 0 0.204 moles of aluminum oxide if all of our aluminum reacts. And now let's do the same thing for the copper to oxide. So there are 0 0.372 moles of copper to oxide and we know that one mole of aluminum oxide is produced for every three moles of copper to oxide. So now we have 0 0.124 moles of aluminum oxide formed if all of the copper oxide reacts. So now we need to compare the two and figure out which one is the limiting reagent. In this case, it is the copper. Since it has a smaller value of aluminum oxide being formed. So therefore, the limiting reagent is the copper to oxide. And we also know that this is how this is the maximum amount of product we could form from this reaction because once the copper to oxide runs out, then we're not going to form any more product. So now step 3 is to now find the mass. So for this part, we use the equation mass is equal to number of moles times the molar mass. So we know the number of moles is going to be equal to the 0 0.124 And we found that out from the previous step. And I also have the molar mass of aluminum oxide, which is 101.96 grams per mole.
So that's why when it comes to these kinds of questions, I like to write down what is given. It just makes it easier to do all the calculations in the end. And now when we multiply this out, uh, you should end up with around uh, one, uh, 12 0.64 grams. Okay, so now let's see what the junior tutor said. In order to solve the problem uh, above, we first write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction of aluminum and copper to oxide. Okay, so they wrote out the same balanced equation, and then after writing the balanced equation, we will focus on the given data. So they wrote down everything they knew, and now we will convert all the given information into moles. Number of moles of aluminum was 0 0.408, and for copper to oxide, it was 0 0.372. And now if all of the aluminum were to be used up, um, yep, so then they found out, this is a different way of finding out whether or not uh, which one is the limiting reactant. So they found out that you needed 0 0.61 moles of copper oxide to react with all of the aluminum. And when they compared it to how much they actually had, we have less moles than what's needed. And now they just found the mass. Okay. And they got 12.64. Let me just double check my answer. Yep, so they got the same thing. So the solution is correct. Yep, so this is a different approach on how to answer the question.